Let's talk about free agency. The free agents, the 49ers should get. I got three names. Um, okay. But it's 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 kind of a tricky question because they have like 28 million in cap space, which is ninth most. Sounds like a lot, but they also have like 25 free agents and they have some guys who aren't free agents that they have to extend anyway. Like remember last year with Kittle, they had to give him an extension because he was great. Well, that now they got to do that with Fred Warner. And I think oh, that's boy. priority yeah. number one. Yeah. So he's going to end up getting 18, 19 million a year. That's the first thing they got to do. Um, and so the, I, I, I'm not even talking about players on other teams yet. Just Warner. Two, a lot of people want the Niners to re-sign Trent Williams. I think that's a mistake because he's going to be the highest paid offensive lineman of all time. You had him last year and the offensive line was terrible. Though I don't, I'm not sure that the best way to build an offensive line is to spend a ton of money on one of the five positions and have bad players at the other four. He's great, but it just doesn't work. So I think you let him go, and instead of, instead of signing the top left tackle on the market for $24 million a year, which is quarterback money, sign the top center. Sign the top center. Center's an important position, and the Niners don't have one because Weston Richburg, they're going to have to cut him. He's injured. So they could sign like Corey Lindsley, who was the all-pro last year. He's in Green Bay. He's 30 years old. And it's, you save $10 million a year because it's not a left tackle. Or you could even get someone – like you don't have to get the top center. But just get an excellent center instead of spending all that money on Trent Williams and draft a guy. Or move Daniel Brunskill out to left tackle because I think he's a better offensive lineman at any position than Mike McGlinchey. Um, they could do could that. He, could he handle left tackle? Yeah, he's he's played both left tackle and right tackle for the Niners. He started there uh, in 2019, and they won. He played well. I think he's only given up five sacks in his entire career. It's a good player. I love it. I love that move. You know, Trent Williams is not committed to being a 49er. He's really, uh, you know, a freelancer. Yeah, he's committed to himself, and it's yeah. fair to have a freelancer at tight end or maybe at wide receiver. But as the as your left tackle, Joe Staley didn't act that way. You're supposed right. to be the leader of a group. And if you're spending 20 quarterback money on that guy, I would expect that kind of a return that, kind of, that he yeah. would provide more than just, you know, good individual play. So that's what I would do. So I that's like two. It. That's two. We got uh, Warner and a top center, whichever one the Niners can get. And then finally, thing is interesting is the Jason Verrett thing. I wrote an article about him yesterday and I keep going back and forth. What do the Niners do with Jason Verrett? He missed four seasons. He's almost never healthy. But he was healthy last year for the most part, and he was fabulous, Dad. When he's healthy, he's it's hard to get a, a better cornerback. Like, if they let him go and sign someone else, he won't be as good when healthy. The problem with Jason Verrett is he could tear his hamstring in training camp, and you'll never see him again. But uh, replacing him won't be easy. If you let him go, you'd want to get someone c- comparable. So that means you'd have to spend a first-round pick on that, and it seems like the Niners might be prepared to spend a first-round pick on a quarterback. So I was talking to our cousin and he was saying, well, what you could do is you could just structure the contract with a lot of incentives based on playing time. You know, we pay you. If you play eight games, you get a bonus. If you play 12 games, you get a bonus. If you play 16 games, you get a bonus. That seems to be a really good way to handle it with Jason Verrett because he's so good and you need to protect yourself as an organization. So an incentive based two or three year contract should work. Uh, Those are three guys, but I don't, the only way the Niners can pull off, these moves, which won't be cheap, is getting rid of Jimmy now. That's the kicker. You got to do that. If you keep Jimmy, you forget Corey Lindsley. Forget D- Jason Verrett. You might even not even be able to keep Fred Warner. They may end up trading him the way they traded DeForest Buckner for a draft pick, something stupid like that. So I think the key to all of this, again, is where we started, getting rid of Jimmy in eight days. Wow. Um, yes. Okay. Let's do this. I I really didn't expect the answer you gave, but I love it that they have to look to their own free agents first. Yes. Having said that, and let's pretend money's not an issue because I'm sure. not good at that anyway. And I'm kind of goofy headed these days. Let's pretend that they mm-hmm. can sign their own guys, but they have to sign, say, a bunch of free agents. Who are the top three that you think money aside? Let's not consider that. That would be good for them. Well, the center I mentioned, the all-pro center from Green Bay, Corey oh, Lindsley, would be terrific. Uh, another one would be uh, they could use a safety because the Chikwaski tart's good, but he misses about 10 games a year. I think they need to let him go, and they could sign another guy. He was with Kyle Shanahan on the Falcons. His name is Keanu Neal. You've never heard of him, but he's a good player. 
That would be two. What other? What else could they use? Jeez. Oh well, um, they could re-sign Emmanuel Sanders. He might get cut by this by the by the Saints. Debo Samuel misses a lot of time. If he's if he's cheap, that could be another guy because they're going to lose Kendrick Bourne. They could use a number three receiver. Maybe Emmanuel Sanders. How about those ones? I love it. And the thing about uh, everything I know about Sanders is he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. And he's talk about he's an Alex Smith type. He yes. might be useful in, in meetings to raise the to raise the standard, to raise the ex expectations. Plus, he has been a very good receiver. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad we did free agents. You, you really came through. Thanks. And then the final one that could be like a, an edge rusher because D Ford, God knows when he's ever going to play a game. They got to get rid of him, Mickey. They got to get rid of him and they should probably get a replacement. So um, I don't know. They could get Yannick Ngakwe, who's been on a few teams. He's a good player. Or they could resign Kerry Hyder, who just gave him eight sacks last year. Do something like that. D Ford was a terrible mistake. Big time. Big time yeah. mistake and predictable mistake. He had injuries. The Chiefs didn't want him. That's always like. It's like the situation right now with the Niners. The Niners really don't want Jimmy Garoppolo. Every team should be like, well, if you don't want him, why, why, why would we? You know him. You just spent four years with him, and you don't want him. Like, well, we don't know him as well as you do. We see him play, but there must be something between the ears or in the meetings that you just don't like. Well, we take your word for it. The only team that would feel like they know better is the Patriots. So you just right. take And that was advice. the thing with D. Ford. Kansas City Ford. didn't want him. Well, you, you should – why do you know more about D Ford than they do? Why, why would you not take their, their word for and it? And in fact, history has shown the Niners were dead wrong on him. And the Chiefs were right. Like, yeah, really not surprising.